Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the spooky Makaya World Reviews. I'm your Halloween demon, the Tone of Makaya, master of minds and of course of men. We are in week three of my Simpsons Treehouse of Horror Retrospective. We've had some big ups and some big downs thus far, but we are into the beginning of the seasons I am mostly unfamiliar with, having stopped watching the show around um, season like 11 to 13. I was on and off in those seasons as well, so I'll be hitting some unexplored territory for myself as we look at episodes 11 through 15 of the specials. Hopefully we'll see some good stuff from these seasons that I personally may have not been a fan of, but I'm going to keep an open mind here. I said the past few weeks I'm not going to be going over the writers, directors, etc. It's information I find unimportant for these reviews, not to take anything away from those hard-working men and women. But hit that subscribe button now, do it now, and let's get to the spine-tingling horror, comedy horror, horror comedy, whatever. Episode 11 from season 12 in 2000, the couch gag is we get a Monsters opening, which I like. How bad was that new Monsters movie, huh? Yeah. All, all of them, sans Lisa, are killed by the townsfolk. Story number one, g -g ghost d -d dad Based on the Bill Cosby failure, Ghost Dad. Add that to his many personal failures, I suppose. Homer's horoscope says he will die. Marge's horoscope says her husband will die. The day just gets worse as he gets a paper cut, almost gets hit by a tree, and gets a pickaxe in the forehead. Also gets half his car crushed. A snake bite, but finally is killed by choking on some broccoli. He is told by St. Peter he's going to hell unless he does a good deed. But it's Homer, so we get a series of foibles, where he is unable to really do anything good. Finally, he does save a baby from being killed, but St. Peter doesn't see it, so Homer is sent to hell. First off, the devil isn't Flanders, which sucks. Bring back Devil Flanders. I demand it. Besides that, this was okay, I guess. It wasn't very funny. It wasn't very exciting. The story just kind of felt flat. I didn't even really smile once during it, but it wasn't poorly written. I liked when Homer fawned over Lenny, and, and there's a joke about uh, St. Peter not being Santa Claus. That was okay. Story number two, Scary Tales Can Come True, which is based on Grimm's fairy tales in general. In an old-timey fairy tale world, Homer is an out-of-work local oaf who can't afford to keep his kids fed. So he drops them in the woods. They kill Goldilocks by accident when they lock her in the bear's house. They are taken in by an old witch who fattens them up and is obviously going to eat them. But Homer saves the kids, and the old lady ends up in the oven. But his bottom half was turned into a chicken, which is a blessing in disguise as he can feed his family with some giant-ass eggs. So has some decent jokes. Homer climbing up Rapunzel's hair and it ripping off was pretty good. Mo being a troll who just wants love but comes on too strong. And the kids finding out they had a brother and sister before them that died in the woods were all good. There's a part where the witch says she has a date with a guy named George Cauldron. And it sounds made up, but he's real. Wasn't it the same joke as the Brady Bunch movie with Jan and a George Glass? Uh, I think so. So it did have some decent jokes. It was pretty blandly written. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about it. It gave me a chuckle as it barreled towards its inevitable conclusion. Hmm. Story 3, Night of the Dolphins, uh, based on the birds and Day of the Dolphin. Lisa lets a seemingly friendly dolphin go from a SeaWorld-type place, and it turns out it's some kind of dolphin warlord who proceeds to rally all the other dolphins to take over the town. And with some mighty violence, they push the town of Springfield into the sea as the dolphins once again take dry land. Uh, the violence here is really the selling part with the murder of Lenny and the big fight scene near the end being draws. It's also a good homage to the birds with the dolphins sitting all over town looking menacing. Beyond that, another story where the writing really lacked something, like a punch. It just, it was flat, it wasn't funny, it wasn't really gory, it wasn't really a Halloween story. I don't know, kind of out of what ways to say that, uh, that the writing was just bad. There are some okay jokes, though, you know, this, this wasn't really a very good story. Episode 12 from season 13 in 2001. Uh, for the couch guy, we get a really long and convoluted opening, which, to be honest, doesn't bode well. No couch gag. I don't know why I keep saying couch when there's often not a couch gag. Um, I worry this is just padding the time, though. Story 1, Hex and the City. Original content. The name was based on Sex and the City, not Sex in the City, which I've always gotten wrong. In Ethnic Town, Marge visits a gypsy to get her fortune read, and of course... Homer wrecks things, so she curses him. Bart's, Bart's neck grows, Marge becomes hairy, Lenny and Carl die, and Mo is pickled. And before they die, Mo and co. recommend finding a leprechaun to break the curse. So Bart and Homer do just that. Then the leprechaun and Gypsy fall in love and get married. She doesn't remove the curse because Homer never apologizes, and Bart dies. What the fuck was this story? 
Let's start with the good stuff. Ethnic Town was kind of funny, but the jokes went on way too long. Lenny and Carl were easily the best part. Carl talking about catching a leprechaun, and Lenny suggesting they find Jesus, but Carl says, he's much harder to catch. And then Lenny wanting to die before Carl. That's all great. It's also 30 seconds of the episode. Homer is way too stupid for some reason, like unreasonably stupid. Bart dies. The wedding. It was such a mess. This was just, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Not good. Uh, yeah. Story number two, House of Wax, based on 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I'll argue the Disney Channel original movie, Smart House, which came out in 1999, so before this episode, I'm just saying. Aping Philip K. Dick's sales pitch, a robot sells Marge and Ultra House, and after some tinkering, they land on Pierce Brosnan's voice. It all goes well until the house falls in love with Marge and attempts to kill Homer and replace him with itself. After a 2001-inspired takedown, they turn the house over to Patty and Selma, and it laments its new life, as anyone would. Pierce Brosnan makes this story. First off, the kids are like, let's put the voice to 007, and Marge goes, George Lazenby? Which was good. And then we get the house making everyone their favorite food after it inspects their feces, which is funny. It visually remembers Hal 9000, which I like. The romantic scenes with Marge are well done, and it doesn't over-sexualize Marge, just enough to make the tension work. And the ending was well done and humorous. Pierce tries an American accent, and... and you know, him not doing well was pretty funny. I enjoyed the story. It was on point, told its story in a nice, flowing manner, had some good humor and a level of tension that was appropriate. Story number three, Wiz Kids, based on the Harry Potter franchise. Bart and Lisa go to wizard school, very original, and Lisa is better at it. They practice turning toads into princes. Millhouse makes a drunkard, Lisa makes a homosexual, and Bart makes an abomination. Burns and Smithers are Voldemort and a giant snake of this story and attack the kids' talent show, hoping to steal Lisa's powers, but Bart uses his blunt force power to stop it, and Smithers sexually eats Mr. Burns. Uh, what was with that Smithers joke? The visual was kind of funny, but I couldn't help but feel it was in poor taste. I don't know. I don't care about any of this. I, I wasn't a fan. The frog monster Bart made was kind of funny, but that's it at best. At a stretch. I, I don't want to talk about the story anymore. Episode 13 from season 14 in 2002. Uh, another long opening with a seance to talk, about, to talk to the now dead Maud Flanders and no couch gag. Story number one, Send in the Clones, based on the movie Multiplicity. The title is from Send in the Clowns, the song. Homer needs a new hammock. Thankfully, the hammock man conveniently passes by and sells him a new, mysterious one. He soon finds out it makes clones of him, but they are mute, dumb, and have no belly button. Homer begins making them do all of his mundane tasks, as well as increasingly dangerous ones, merely disposing of them when they die. But he finds they are a little bit too liberal with his orders when they murder Flanders, and he tries to dispose of them, but leaves them the hammock, so they make an infinite number of homers, which becomes a blight on the world. In the end, they are led into Springfield Gorge by some giant donuts and killed, but it's revealed real Homer went into the gorge as well, and a clone replaced him, but no one seems to care. I think multiplicity is an underrated film. I'm a Michael Keaton fan, as much as anyone can be. But this is actually pretty funny. It kind of took a turn I didn't expect with the murder and Homer just being like, forget this. We also see amongst the clones is Peter Griffin from Family Guy and Homer from the Tracing Allman show. There's a lot of story packed into this short time span. And I chuckled a few times as well as appreciated the resolution. Though in Bart the Daredevil, Homer fell into that gorge twice and didn't die. Uh, but they did die this time. Whatever, that's a minor gripe. Still a good story and had some violence added to it. Plus, a Fl Flanders death is always welcome. Story number two, The Fright to Creep and Scare Harms. Original content, the title <laughs> is from the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution, The Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Lisa is mad about guns. Big shocker there. And sets out to have Springfield ban them, which she accomplishes in due time. But after de-gunning the city, the dead rise, and boy howdy do they have guns. They terrorize the town for some time before Professor Frink gives Homer a time travel device. Homer goes back, stops Lisa, and the town double murder the corpses before they rise. Another Homer returns from further time, but Mo shoots him and he leaves the time travel device. The zombies in question are Billy the Kid, Frank and Jesse James, the Sundance Kid, and inexplicably, Kaiser Wilhelm. Why are they all buried in Springfield? I don't know, but I got a kick out of it. I kind of like the premise, 
like these dead guys are waiting for guns to go away so they can take over the town. Reminds me of uh, of a, a Lamberto Brava film premise. I got a real kick out of it. Uh, we also see that Maggie has at least 30 guns. They make a new playground for the kids out of the guns. It's very poorly done, and Ralph is playing on it. I like the unexpected ending of the time travel device, though I would have liked to call back to the last time Homer had one. We don't really get that. It seems like I, I should hate the stupid twist, but I thought it worked for the ridiculous nature of the story. And, and this one is, is pretty good in my book. Story number three, The Island of Dr. Hibbert, based on The Island of Dr. Moreau. It's a pretty simple take, like I said, on The Island of Dr. Moreau. It doesn't really go out of its way to do anything special or different. I like the original story, and this does have a few funny moments. Marge is turned into a panther, and her and Homer have sex, and he doesn't realize she's a panther until after, uh, despite mentioning her tail, as well as a really unsettling scene where Homer milks a cow Flanders, and they have a discussion about it. I had to watch that twice. Scary stuff. But in the end, everyone has turned into animals and loves it. This was totally fine. It wasn't bad. It wasn't very exciting or eventful. The animal revelations get tiring pretty quickly. And none of the designs stand out as particularly clever. Episode 14 from season 15 in 2003. The opening, we get another one of these long openings that I don't particularly love. Uh, this one is the, the family violently attacks each other, leading to Marge murdering Homer with a shotgun. A little bit excessive there. Eh. Story number one, Reaper Madness, semi-original content. The name is based on Reefer Madness, a movie. Did you ever see the Family Guy episode in 2000, Death is a Bitch, where Death gets injured and Peter has to be Death? Yeah, this is exactly the same story we have here three years later. Now, I know it's a super original story to begin with, but it feels almost exactly the same in tone and content. I don't have anything to say about this story Really, they did nothing new, and in fact, the Family Guy one had Norm MacDonald in it as death, so that instantly gets more points. Mo hanging himself and not dying was pretty funny, and Homer using Patty or Selma to try to trick God so he doesn't have to kill Marge is okay, I guess. Story number two, Frankenstein, based on Frankenstein. Professor John Frank is getting the Nobel Prize, but he wishes his long-dead scientist adventurer father was there to see it. So he reanimates him, and of course he goes mad and begins stealing organs and body parts. After some violence, Frank stops his dad with a kick to the groin and keeps his consciousness in a robot, i.e. like a Miho brain cylinder. Frank's father is voiced by legendary comedian Jerry Lewis, who Hank Azaria has been imitating for Professor Frank for all these years, so it was kind of nice to see him, to hear him at least, too bad it was in this story. The positives, he kills Flanders, good. He rips Skinner's spine out, which his mother chastises him for. Pretty funny. Beyond that, and I hate to bring up other shows or cartoons, I'm simply doing it because those ones did it better. It feels like a mix between the general theme in the Venture Brothers of Rusty and his father's relationship, and the episode of Invader Zim from 2001, Dark Harvest, where Zim steals organs. I don't usually like to compare things because, you know, homages and stuff are nice, but this was a really poorly done story, and I want you to watch those alternatives instead. Story number three, Stop the World, I Want to Goof Off, based on the Twilight Zone episode, A, a Kind of Stopwatch. After getting some retro comics, Bart and Milhouse order a magic time-stopping watch from one of the ads, and it works. And you can imagine they abuse everyone around town quite thoroughly, often using nudity. This goes on for some time before the town figures out who's doing it and decides to kill the two. Of course, they freeze time, but the watch breaks. They decide to indulge themselves before trying to repair the watch, which takes 15 years. After it gets fixed, they replace themselves that the mob is barreling down on with Martin Prince. The Simpsons wonder why Bart is 15 years older. Lisa gets the watch and tampers with the fabric of reality. The comics they look at are things like Superman vs. Patty Hearst and Evil Knievel jumps to Jackson 5. Good, good stuff there. I just remember those ads from old 70s and 80s comics. I love them. So this has a little bit of nostalgia for me. I'm not old enough to have read them when they came out, but still. So this has a lot of jokes just jumbled in that are fairly funny. Just the entire premise and its absurdity lends itself to lots of visual gags, which, you know, this is a cartoon, so that works for me. In the end, Lisa changes the fabric of reality, and we get Bobblehead Simpsons, Fantastic Four Simpsons, among others. I like this story, and it almost saved the episode. Episode number 15 from season 16 in 2004. The opening, we get uh, Keeping It Kodos, a sitcom starring Kang. And a call back to Hungry Are the Damned. They're eating the Simpsons. Nice little reference there. We do get the theme song from Perfect Strangers, which is the best theme song ever. 
Story number one, The Ned Zone, based on the dead zone, of course. As established by the book, movie, and TV show, Ned gets bonked in the head, and when he touches people, he can tell how they are going to die. After some goofs, he touches Homer and finds out he's going to kill Homer. Refusing to give into causality, he changes the future and finds out he has to shoot Homer because Homer is going to blow up the nuclear power plant. Well, this happens. He shoots Homer, and Homer blows up the plant anyways. Heaven, Homer, and God are buddies, which was established in Homer the Heretic. A really solid adaptation that used the premise intelligently enough for the story and laced in some of that Homer Flanders conflict that we've grown to enjoy. It has some wacky deaths, and the art in this is, is a little bit better, a little more tighter, a little more cinematic. I like it. I like the story, and it's a very good opening gambit to this episode. We also get a Hans Mole Man death, excuse me, so bravo on that. Story 2, Four Beheadings in a Funeral, based on the novels of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. There is a Jack the Ripper type killer on the loose who has mutton chops, and Lisa and Bart are Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, respectively. This goes about as paint by numbers as you might expect. Lots of bad British accents, lots of bad jokes about the British. It's slightly racist, which is keeping in line with Sherlock Holmes, and a weird joke about a stool coming alive that I don't understand. Does anybody understand that one? In the end, Chief Wiggum did it, but is stopped by steampunk Kang and Kodos. Hmm. But the whole thing is Ralph's dream, and we do get a Nemo in Dreamland reference, which is nice. But this was not a very interesting story. It was just kind of, I was kind of bored the whole time. Uh, meh is the best way to describe it. Could have been slightly interesting had they played into the mystery aspect and not made so many jokes like, British food is bad. We know British food sucks, right? It's one of the main reasons I hate the British. Story number three, last story of the week. In the Belly of the Boss, based on Fantastic Voyage, Magic School Bus, and of course, Inner Space. At a invention convention, Maggie climbs into a giant pill, which is taken by Mr. Burns. Simpsons won't stand for this, so they are shrunken down and sent into Burns with a tiny vessel. After lots of Homer stupidity, they save Maggie, but someone has to stay behind or the ship won't make it. Begrudgingly, it's Homer, but he regrows inside of Burns. That's how they live from now on, and we get a big dance number to end things. The Burns-Homer dynamic of sharing one body feels like a reverse of the Treehouse of Horror 2 story, If I Only Had a Brain. Uh, where Burns' head was put on Homer's body. Marge gets super sexualized here in a bathing suit that begins degrading. It's kind of strange. But overall, this was pretty damn funny. The writing was wacky, but it worked out for this kind of story. Burns' body is shown as a complete mess, which we obviously know. Homer was a little bit overly stupid, but that's kind of fine. The ending visual of Homer bloating out of Burns' small body had me chuckling. All in all, pretty solid. All right, let's go over some of these stories. Number 11 was, was a pretty bad start. None of these stories were... Bad per se, they just felt boring and flat. Uh, I mean, it felt like they jumped the dolphin by this point, as it were. These stories felt creatively bankrupt. They, they just weren't interesting. Nothing compelling happened in them. It didn't feel much like Halloween, either. I mean, it, it wasn't hard to watch. It was just totally, completely charmless. Yeah, charmless is a good word for episode 11. Now, 12, we have a one winner sandwich between two absolute fucking stinkers it's like eating a sandwich with shit for bread but the most delicious corned beef you've ever had in the middle now that's highly overstating the health story but it feels like that in this episode it feels like it's something truly classic amidst leprechaun sex and a smithers snake deep throating mr burns i'm hardly a prude. i just don't know what i'm supposed to do with this stupid tone deaf unhorror supposed halloween stories being cursed by a witch or a gypsy or whatever that's classic that's easy just do like thinner you could have just just done thinner. Homer gets cursed by the gypsy. He goes to Fat Tony to help. Fat Tony fails. He has to learn some humility, but he's too stupid to do that. So he doesn't. The end. That's a better story than we found a fucking leprechaun and it falls in love with her. I don't really care enough about Harry Potter for a parody of it to do anything for me. And this one certainly didn't even try. Thank you for Pierce Brosnan. And as a 007 fan, uh, that one was hard to say because he only had one good movie. Number 13... Most assuredly a step in the right direction, as I enjoyed all three of these stories on <clears throat> this one, to varying degrees. The Island of Dr. Hibbert was pretty uninspired in every fashion, but it did have two jokes I mentioned I like. <clears throat> but even as the weakest part of it, it wasn't bad. Just there. And the other two, more than make up for it, having some level of comedy and violence that I come to expect from a Halloween episode. Uh, both these stories also had nice twists I actually liked. They were appropriately ridiculous for the stories and gave me something I wasn't expecting. It's nice to get out of the formula, and the writing was pretty compelling on both the clone and the gun stories. I'm very happy to see this increase in quality from what we have been getting thus far this week, and I'm silly hoping it continues. I have not seen 14 or 15, so those are going to be surprises to me, good or bad. 
And as for 14, we drop back down for this one. Save the stopwatch story, which I really am a fan of. I, I got a hell of a kick out of the story, uh, and it was clever, but it felt like something Barton Milhouse would also do. Like, it didn't even need to be a Halloween episode. I could see that happening in a normal episode, as far, as ridiculous as they've gotten. Uh, it definitely ended on a strong note. I was happy about that. I think I'd rather end on a good note than start on one, because this sure as hell didn't start on a good one. We had two stories that didn't only feel derivative, which I normally don't mind. They felt kind of like ripoffs of things I already mentioned. I mean, we had a story that wasted Jerry Lewis. Really, what was the point of putting him in there? To, to, to say Glavin and whatnot for two minutes? He didn't do anything. The character made no sense and was just annoying. Uh, the other one was barely notable. Homer's death, eh, we've seen it better in other things. And it gave us nothing to hang our hat on. Mediocre episode, only mediocre because it did have one good story. And ending off on 15, first off, the usage of the Perfect Strangers theme song is sublime. The best theme song in TV show history. I will open that to some debate, but it is one of my favorites. So this episode gets high marks for that. Beyond that, besides the Sherlock Holmes story, which was fairly boring, the rest of this was solid and entertaining. The parodies were on point and had that Simpsons flair that so many of these lack. The characters were just odd enough for a Halloween special, but still maintained some semblance of who they are. We got some nice laughs and some decent grotesque stuff. I liked a lot of the callbacks, previous stories, treehouses or otherwise. Uh, it felt it might have been the strongest of this week. Yeah, I'd probably say that. This was kind of a rough one with some real pleasant highlights thrown in. Hoping next week we can get more episodes like 15 and not like 11. So overall, what did I think? Some of what I feared came to pass. But man, there's a lot of good in this. The writing on these has become so wildly inconsistent that I don't know what I'm about to get into next week. But I'm starting to feel like they are getting it a little bit. Certainly 11 or 12 were rough. Rougher than 13, 14, and 15, uh, despite the flaws 14 had. So I'm hoping for a, a big finish, a big finale, uh, that, that they are finally getting back to understanding what makes these episodes so special. Um, so please join me for the last Trials of Horror retrospective where I look at 16 through 20, and of course my big, big time, total ranking review from worst to best of all of these stories out on October 31st, Halloween. Thank you all so much for joining me here. I hope you have a wonderful October, a wonderful Halloween, and have enjoyed this video. I put a lot of time into these and enjoyed the hell out of doing it. So please add me on Instagram at Demon Peaks for daily, daily Twin Peaks memes. Check out my podcast, The Dark Peaks Podcast, and subscribe here to listen to me every week review whatever nonsense I'm going to review. This has been the Tony Micaiah, Master of Minds and of Men. Thank you so much, and goodbye. <laughs>